Welcome back to the CPU Galaxy Channel. When it comes to upgrade a 386 system, we have a quite nice range of CPUs available and some of them got already many times reviewed on other channels as the very common Cyrix DLC40 CPU. But today I want to put the focus on one upgrade CPU which is quite hard to find and for those who owned one it is usually giving a lot of headache. I'm talking about the Texas Instruments 486 SXL50 CPU. Actually, from the specifications point of view, this is the most powerful upgrade you can get for your 386 system. It comes with 8 kilobytes of level 1 cache instead of 1 kilobyte from the DLC and clock doubling technology. That means we need here a bus frequency of 25 MHz and internally it will get doubled to 50 MHz. So this uh, CPU clock and 8 kilobytes of level 1 cache sounds very promising already. But why this thing is giving headache? Well, the clock doubling needs to get enabled by setting a register in the CPU by a software command. And if you don't set the level 1 cache handling by the right way, the CPU will give you a lot of frustration because you were expecting much more performance. And in the video today I will show exactly how to set everything nicely, which software you need and of course we will do some benchmarks. <clears throat> the focus in the today's video is just on this Texas Instrument CPU. And don't worry, in one of my next videos I will benchmark all other CPUs here to get their performance nicely compared. What hardware I will use today? For the main board I will go for this Georgia's 386-486 hybrid board, the 495SX. It comes with 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache and 8 megabytes of RAM. We also got a 132-pin PGA socket for 386DX CPUs or those kinds of upgrades as well as a socket for a 486 CPU where also a 387 can find its place. 8 16-bit ISA slots and two of them with Visa local bus extension which is very uncommon for a 386 board. Yeah, for the video card I will take the Zeng ET 4000 W32P with Visa local bus. This is a very powerful card and is eliminating any bottlenecks we might have here uh, with a common ISA VGA card. Then we need a common ISA IO card and for my drive I will take this uh, IDE SD adapter where I already have everything pre-installed. Yeah, you must pay attention that those 132 pin 486 upgrades won't work on all 386 boards, especially in very early boards you might find yourself struggling with compatibility problems. But in this board everything should work uh, quite fine. We also need a proper floating point unit, for that I will take this Cyrix 487 DLC 33. Yeah, so I think we are already very well equipped now and yeah, let's build up the setup. We have already a post screen and yeah, let's enter first the BIOS. We got here a common American Megatrends BIOS dated in 1992. Just common stuff and nothing special at all. Advanced settings. Here we get the possibility to enable or disable the internal cache memory or also level 1 cache in the CPU, which is good for us. That means our 8 kilobytes of L1 cache are now enabled. On older 386 boards uh, it can happen that this uh, option is not available. Uh, 
because it is not prepared yet for this kind of 486 upgrade CPUs from Cyrix or Texas Instruments, which usually have a level 1 cache. But in this case, uh, you also need to enter just a, a software command to enable the cache uh, memory. But I will show you this also later on. So advanced chipsets, um, also here just common stuff, nothing special, and I set everything here to the fastest possible settings. And then let's boot up here. For some reason, the BIOS is posting here a Cyrix 486 DLC CPU instead of a Texas Instruments SXL2, but yeah, we don't care. Let me first show you the problem of this CPU. Let's enter Norton system information and we can see here a 486 at 25 megahertz and we would expect 50 megahertz so by default the clock doubling technology is disabled inside the cpu and here we are coming already to the point where everybody gets frustrated as well i got because uh, i didn't found quickly a possibility to enable this uh, clock doubling so in the bios there is no possibility and you need a, cert a certain software for that from Texas Instruments and I couldn't find it anywhere or uh, some special software commands and yeah let me show you how you can do this we have here a small program it's called Cyrix and it's usually for 486 DLC or SLC CPUs from Cyrix uh, to uh, make here some settings for the cache. If you look at the third point here, which is dash C and D, um, that means here you can change usually for Cyrix CPUs the cache mode uh, between normal mode or two-way associative mode. Well, for the Texas Instrument CPUs, the cache mode is fixed internally already to two-way associative mode. That means uh, the option dash C D. Uh, is not needed on a Texas Instrument CPU, but this CPU is using exactly this register to enable the clock doubling technology. That means to do so, we just need to write here Cyrix CD, and now we should get 50 megahertz internally. Uh, let's verify this again with Norton uh, system information. And yes, we can see here the 486 is clocked at 50 megahertz. Let's do the benchmark. And here we get already 66 points here for the benchmark, which is almost a double than we had before with 36, I think we had. So very, very nice. And we are already on the right way. Let's check also G, check CPU. Here we can see also classic 486 CPU. Here it's showing 55 megahertz. And it shows here also that the level one cache is enabled in right, right through mode. So then let's make H cache check. Also very interesting. And here we can see the text problem. Um, if you check here, up to 256 kilobytes, we get here always the same measurements with 44 microseconds per kilobyte. This means it's not recognizing here the first level cache, um, the first eight kilobytes here. So there must be still something wrong with the cache. And this I will also show you now. For some reason, SpeedSwiss cannot show here uh, the right CPU clock uh, and also the CPU benchmark um, is not the right uh, value we can see here right now. So uh, it seems we have here some compatibility issues with SpeedSwiss. But on the chart here for the memory timings, uh, we can clearly see that the level 1 cache is not detected nicely. But for the uh, level 2 cache, uh, we can see it now, um, this is working quite nice. So let me show you what we can do here to make this working proper. We did again this uh, Cyrix tool, and if you check the second option, it's dash B. Um, this is uh, enabling or disabling the barb input. So you have two possibilities to handle the cache uh, by enabling the barb input or by enabling uh, the flash input. 
So in this case, um, on the board, it seems so that the uh, barb input is by default enabled and we need to disable it and enable the flush input to have a proper cache handling. So for that we type cyrix dash b minus for disabling the barb input, then dash f for uh, enabling the flush input. Then we put here again cd for the clock doubling technology. And the next thing we need to put here dash m and i was trying this this is enable cache of first 64 kilobyte of each megabyte so i was trying all different variants here and by enabling uh, this option i got always the best results in all the benchmarks and games so enter and that's it as i mentioned before on older um, mainboards you might miss the option in the BIOS to enable the first label cache and in this case you need to add here cyrix e for enabling the uh, one kilobyte cache via CRO or in this case the eight kilobytes of level one cache but in our case here we don't need to do this um, because it is set here now in the BIOS I will put the link uh, in the description below where you can download this program and I will also put there a text file with all the different options you might need for your CPU. Then let's go back to those bench and let's go back now to system information and remember we got there before 66 in the CPU speed and now we got 70.2 so we could increase significantly here the CPU speed by uh, setting the cache to the uh, for the right handling so a quite nice improvement let's go to g here we can see also it's showing here 57.1 megahertz for the cpu and the right uh, the level one cache is still enabled in write through mode so now it's getting interesting h for cache check what we can see here remember before we couldn't see the eight kilobytes and now we can see uh, from 1 to 8 kilobytes we get a measurement of 28 microseconds per kilobyte and then up to 256 kilobytes for the second level cache uh, another value this shows us now that the level one cache is nicely working right now also here at the end it is detecting level one cache 8 kilobytes with 39.4 megabytes per second level two cache with 256 kilobytes um, at uh, 24.7 megabytes per second and the main memory speed uh, with 6.8 megabytes per second so very very nice results we got already here and also at speedsus we can see here in the graph now the 8 kilobytes of level 1 cache as we are expecting uh, from a cpu like that so this shows us now that everything is set how it should be and everything is working proper I'm quite happy with these results and after all these researches um, I'm happy to show this here in one of my videos uh, for anybody who was struggling with the same problems and to need a solution now. But now let's have a closer look at all the benchmark results. By just enabling the clock doubling without optimizing the cache settings we can see here the results. 66 at SysInfo we saw already before, 10.5 kilo dry stones at integer speed and 2.8 mega stones on the floating point unit. 3D Bench came up with 18.6 frames and PC Player at 320 to 200 with 4.2 frames per second. At Doom we got a very low value of 8.65 frames, while Fracked Int needed 105 seconds to generate a fractal image. And now it's getting interesting after optimizing the settings with Cyrix Exe. We can see a huge performance improvement. A plus of 70% at integer calculation is really massive. Also the floating point unit gets handled much better with the optimized settings at a plus of almost 25%. Same picture at 3D Bench. The benchmark is showing up already much smoother and we could gain here also more than 8 frames per second, which is a plus of 44.6%. PC player could finish the benchmark with 6.1 frames, which is also a plus of 45%. So these performance increments are really serious now. And now Doom. Here the whole benchmark is running much smoother now and you can definitely feel that the 8 kilobytes level 1 cache are paying off here. At the end we got here 13.5 frames and a plus of 56%. So let's consider this is almost playable. Also in Fractint we could immediately feel the boost. 
Instead of 105 seconds, our setup was able to finish the job in 82 seconds. This is a time saving of almost 22%. We can see here clearly that those small settings are nicely boosting the CPU for any application, no matter if it is integer or floating point demanding. Yeah, for a long time I wanted to have this CPU running proper, and well, here we have it. Please subscribe and thumbs up if you liked the video. Visit me also at Twitter if you want to see a little bit more in between than here on my YouTube channel. But now I will enjoy this nice setup a little bit with some gaming. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. But I can't see if you're right here next to me Something's wrong, wasn't it fun? Is it now we're done? You get dressed, I'm like a mess And you tell me to confess And you tell me to confess Oh I don't know what to say, what to do, how to make you see this is nothing in real life, it might just have been a bad dream You can run, you can hide, but you can't put the blame on me Because you're acting like a volcano Now we're over, that's a fact Phrasing light, see it all bright You were never right Back to life, apologize Too soon to say I'm fine Too soon to say I'm fine Oh I don't know what to say, what to do How to make you see This is nothing in real life It might just have been a bad dream you can run, you can hide, but you can't put the blame on me Because you're